our service, we hear another two of our Advent readings. Our Old Testament reading tells of the comfort that God is going to send to a troubled people, how a straight road will be prepared for God's messenger who brings the good news. And our Gospel reading tells of how John the Baptist saw himself as helping prepare the way for one greater than him. The prophet Isaiah said, Prepare the way of the Lord, make a path for our God in the desert. Each valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill be laid low. The crooked shall become straight, rough places shall be plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. All people shall see it together. This is the promise of the Lord. God's promise shall be fulfilled. Our second candle reminds us of all God's prophets, God's messengers, who confronted injustice and dreamed of a world of freedom and peace. Let us pray. We light this candle for all God's prophets, confronting justice and restoring the dream of a world of freedom and peace. God, as we wait for your promise, give light, give hope. Amen. The psalmist says, I waited patiently for God, for God to hear my prayer. And God bent down to where I sank and listened to me there. Let us pray. Thank you, God. Thank you for beauty. The twinkle in an older person's eye, a child's shout of laughter. Thank you for frosty gardens and frozen puddles, for stunning buildings and roses in winter. Thank you for beauty. Thank you, God. Thank you for creativity the skills of a tapestry weaver, the imagination of a website designer. Thank you for bakers and dancers and crossword compilers, for spiders' webs and city murals. Thank you for creativity. Thank you, God. Thank you for abundance, for seeds and raindrops, for unique snowflakes and infinite galaxies. Thank you for seagulls, plankton and shoals of fish, for wriggling worms and shiny red holly berries. Thank you for abundance. Thank you for your world, God, and our part in it. Thank you that you are a maker and that you made us makers too. Help us to love creation as you love it, to take risks to value it as Jesus did and draw us into the wildness and wonder of your Holy Spirit today and every day. Creator of light and darkness, we so often chase shadows and fail to walk in the light and enjoy the life you've given us. Forgive us, O oh God. May we know that we travel through Advent as forgiven people, May we remember to lift our faces towards the light and walk together with our God in hope and faith. And let us now pray together in the words Jesus taught his first disciples, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. God's people are comforted. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, 
Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, Cry out. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountain of Jerusalem. You who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them to his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptising in the wilderness, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptised by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me, who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Today's readings from the book of Isaiah and the Gospel of Mark are both about a prophet appearing in the wilderness, looking to show a lost people the way to God. The book of Isaiah divides into two parts, with each part having several writers. The original Isaiah is thought to have written chapters of part one. The writer of the part of the book we heard from today, part two, has seen that the Israelites have no option but be to taken into captivity. In part one of the book of Isaiah, the writers have thought that the Israelites might yet turn back to God and save themselves. But here, in the 6th century BCE, we have the Israelites defeated. And the writer of this section of Isaiah part 2 is offering comfort to a sad and confused people. Despite it all, help will come. God will save them. Their time of suffering and defeat will end. In 1st century BCE Palestine, John the Baptist is encouraging his listeners to live their lives as if they believe the Messiah, God's important messenger, is coming to save them. But the people had long given up on any real hope of intervention from their God. So many centuries had passed since success nationally. So many teachers and prophets had promised much, delivered nothing. John offers hope, preaches that the kingdom is near, warns folk that they had better be ready. They have to prepare and watch and wait for the sign that God has come among them. The Gospel of Mark is the most direct and to the point of the four Gospels, telling a story, trying to get new, good news across in as plainly a way as possible. Not for the writer of Mark, the myth-like virgin birth and all these angels, shepherds and wise men. And interestingly, at the other end of the book, the end of the story as it were, in the book's first edition, there's no risen Christ appearing to the disciples. To the writer of this Gospel, John the Baptist proclaiming his message of repentance and of the imminent arrival of God's important messenger, that was the good news worth telling. 
The writer of the Gospel of Mark uses John's life as an example of how our lives must be focused, not afraid to speak out against abuse of power, knowing that God's kingdom is, with, is among us. This week's Advent candle reminds us of the brave and bold people who have raged against the status quo, who have dared to question those in authority and those with the power. The prophets, those who remind us of how God would have us to live our lives, those who tell out how the kingdom of God should be. The second for the prophets who said that Christ would come with good news for many and angry words for some. One of the hymns in the Methodist hymnal is, is in praise of prophets. Welsh priest Dan Damon has written, When listening prophets dare to speak, love thunders like an ocean wave. Old wineskins burst, stone columns quake, and dry bones rise up from the grave. When prophets feel their strength is gone, as churches add to people's pain, a prophet's question lingers on, can dry bones ever live again? True prophets challenge us to change, to wake and wonder, risk and grow, and when the way ahead seems strange, to name the fear and let it go. God bids us rise to speak and move, like prophets on a lighted stage, unmasking fear, revealing love, and making peace from age to age. We are the tellers of God's truth in the worlds we inhabit. There's a lot going on in our world today and it can seem a bit overwhelming. And yet, like the prophets of old, like the prophets of today, who speak out against injustice, who remind us how to be Christ-like humans, we are bid to rise, to speak and move, unmasking fear, revealing love and making peace. To finish, a poem by American poet Mary Hanranen called Poem for Advent. We must prepare a way, trying to straighten paths made crooked by our selfishness and compulsions. We have forgotten already the grace-filled room, the angel's message, do not fear. We are afraid of the journey, the hard road, the bitter cold and the doors slammed in our faces. Yet within us there is such a longing. We must enter our heart's dark stable, clear away the dirty straw of resentment and pride, soil our hands and make some effort to find a fresher, sweeter hay of welcome, light a candle of hope, then humbly await the birth of a new world. The voice of God is the voice crying out for justice and peace. The voice of God is aching for wholeness. The voice of God invites us to stand fast for justice, encourages us to feel worth full, helps us to become whole. In stillness, let us seek to become open to the voice of God. Let us pray. God, Advent is a time of waiting and we come to you in our waiting. We wait with our fears, our anxieties and frustrations, our pains and regrets, our shame and confusion. God, help us to wait in peace. We wait with impatience. We rush around preparing for the festivities not leaving space to prepare our hearts. God, help us to wait in faith. We 
We wait in excitement. We are ready to celebrate. We know the story with its humbleness, simplicity and wonder. God, help us to nurture our joy. We wait in thanksgiving. We are free and able to celebrate. We have others around us to share in the journey. We're able to wonder in the marvel of your gift. God, help us to receive your love and having received your love, to share it in our suffering world. Come, Lord Jesus, into the darkness of our world, a world where there is injustice, racial tension and war, where many people still lack the basics of food and clean water. Come, Lord Jesus, into the uncertain future of migrants and refugees who risk everything to escape atrocities, yet know that they could still end up paying with their lives. Come, Lord Jesus, into our communities where many are struggling with redundancy and debt and food banks have become a lifeline for those in need. Come, Lord Jesus, into the darkness of our cities where greed and discrimination make misery in people's lives. Come, Lord Jesus, into our lives and into the lives of those for whom we are concerned. Bring comfort to the bereaved and to those who are struggling to cope with life on their own. Come, Lord Jesus, give reassurance where there is fear and confidence where there is doubt. Wherever people are hurting, come and let your light shine. And once again, O oh God, we come before you with our prayers for Palestine. O oh God, help and protect the people of Palestine. O oh God, ease their pain and suffering. O oh God, bestower of mercy, bestow your mercy upon them. O oh God, open people's hearts to give in this time of crisis. O oh God, help those who are in need, wherever they may be. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we rejoice in the presence of our God, our God who has promised to come, has come, and has promised to come again. And now a blessing. We travel in time. May God walk with us into eternity. We travel in hope. May God sing with us through the darkness. We travel in wonder. May God dance with us in holy joy. And so may the blessing of the God of glory, traveller, storyteller, dancer, be in us today and every day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.